Okay guys, let's talk about recapitulation theory in very briefly. Okay, so recapitulation theory or repeat theory is telling us a very important insight. It's a hypothesis as you can say. It's by Ernst uh, Haeckel. So let me write, uh, the developer of this idea was Ernst Haeckel. Sorry. I think K E L it would be okay. So Ernst Haeckel at almost in 1880s or 1882s, I guess, for at this particular time, uh, he developed this idea of recapitulation theory. And according to this theory or hypothesis, what he has stated, he told us that ontogeny recapitulates. phylogeny or ontogeny repeats phylogeny so what do we mean by ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny so let's say ontogeny means the the development of embryo so it is dealing with the development of embryo it's a process how a egg is fertilized after the fertilization of the egg it is getting developed into a matured embryo so it's simply embryogenesis or step by step process of embryogenesis so from zygote to matured organism or individual okay now what do we mean by phylogeny it's phylogeny means the relationship between organisms in evolutionary history so evolutionary relationship between organisms so these are the two things that you need to know ontogeny embryogenesis process and the relationship between the embryogenesis stages and the phylogeny means relationship between evolutionary history okay between the different organisms so if we look at the embryogenesis pattern I can't draw all these patterns here because it's a complicated drawing, but uh, you can find it in anywhere in the picture. You can see that in in all the different organisms, if you take a mammal like human being, if you take a, a bird like say chicken, if you take an amphibian like uh, like say no yeah like say frog, if you take uh, another example like say crocodile, so you can, you, if you take many different groups or many organisms from distantly related groups. And if you look for the developmental stages of its embryo, what you can find is very astonishing. And that is remarkable similarity between each of those stages. So it will be very, very hard to distinguish between the developing embryo at the very early stage, whether it is going to be a mammal or it is going to be a reptile or it is going to be a bird. Because at the very beginning, every developmental stages are kind of very, very similar with each other right so there is a very important relationship what he tried to point out uh, point out to us is that if we look at particular this space we are looking at say chicken we are looking at human we are looking at frog for example let's say three examples similarly if we look at here also chicken human and frog so what we are going to find in evolutionary history? We are going to find these three things. If we look at the point of evolutionary history, we are going to find say, say chicken somewhere here, frog somewhere here. Actually, frog will be at this point. Frog somewhere here, let's say. Chicken somewhere here. And let's say the mammal somewhere here. Or human somewhere here. So it's a very, very distantly related. But if you look at uh, all of them and the developmental stages at the beginning, we're going to find that they are kind of linked because almost they are having similar type of structures during the development. So what it is telling us that at the very basic level of development or origin, all of them are sharing a very similar common ancestral pattern. As the time goes by, as they are developed, as they are matured, they are matured into completely different type of organism. 
one is be becoming a bird, another one is becoming a mammal, another one is becoming an amphibian. It's completely different zones, completely different type. But at the very beginning of the generation, of the origin, everything looks like same. So that's what he hypothesized about the evolution. That that's how evolution works. Because in evolution, what is the basic concept of evolution? There is a common ancestor somewhere. From the common ancestor, everything just arised. Right? So that means as we track, track back along this ancestry, along the phylogeny, what we are going to find? We are going to find more similarity. Right? Because as we are going closer, the similarity is ex, ex, increasing right and as we are going bottom the similarity is decreasing in this case similarly during the development we can see that similarity between all of this developmental embryo that's what Ernst Haeckel proposed that yes evolution so this ontogeny or the embryonic analysis is indeed telling us how evolution actually occurs right so that's why it told it, it told that ontogeny re recapitulates phylogeny. It is a representation of the phylogenic events, right? That's it. But still, this is uh, this may be plausible. This is not a full proof, but it is kind of relatable with both the situation. Okay. And this technique, this this particular point, is first proposed for a biological point of view, but now it is being modified to check whether this thing is possible or true for any other stream like the language uh, evolution or like say cognitive behavior during our brain development and all these things so so that's the kind of recapitulation theory and i hope that's helpful thank you